Hi everyone and welcome to day three of this fifth week of our journey through the 40 days of Jesus and as we share this book together looking at the resurrection stories and uh, this week we've been looking at this uh, wonderful story of the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28 and what it means to us as we share these times together. Thank you to Dave Kemp for what he's shared yesterday and I love the idea of um, dancing, joining in the dance of the Trinity uh, as we share God's love and amongst people and see that we can join in with all that God's doing um, during these times of lockdown and all the acts of kindness, all the acts of compassion and love, however big and however small. And thank you for what you're doing to help people wherever you are and letting them help you. So we're going to move to the other side of what Jesus said in these verses today, because uh, as well as encouraging us to share the love of the Trinity with one another and with the wider community, he also encourages us to go and make disciples of all nations. And I don't know about you, but when I hear those words, my, my little heart sinks a lot of the time because I don't feel I am a, a natural evangelist. I talk a lot, I love God a lot, and I love people a lot. But can't we just leave it at that? And the answer from Jesus in these verses, of course, is no. We need to go and share our faith with other people. And that can be a real challenge to us. But I want you to take heart and to take courage because there is some good news around um, that's going on at, right at this moment. The first thing is that um, if we look to uh, the historians and people like this gentleman, um, I don't know about you, but I've been able to look up some of the books and some of the podcasts that I have put to one side to to look at um, for a better day. And these days have, in the evenings particularly, have helped me to, to be able to spend time looking at some of this evidence and stuff. And people like this gentleman, Professor Jean-Pierre Ibsen, Ibsen he, uh, he wrote a book called In the Footsteps of Jesus. And what's good is not only does he speak simply and share lots of photographs, he also um, marries together the historical events around the time of Jesus and the cultural events and uh, looks at them in the context of our Bible stories and of the gospel. And what's really great is that, and this is the good news, that so much of the evidence of what was has been found out about Jesus in those times has actually been married up in the gospel stories. Uh, it's almost as if it proves it to be true. And we give thanks for people who are doing these archaeological digs right at this moment. This is Beth Saida um, on the edge of the Sea of Galilee, where they're actually still digging right at this moment and finding incredible things that supports our faith and the stories of Jesus and the events that have happened around that. And why is that good news? Well, so often we can, we can think our faith is just a, a private or a personal matter for those who share a similar way of seeing or similar feeling to ourselves. But discovering these historical facts are actually a way of showing that these are events that took place in history for all human beings and all the creation. And that can give us a current encouragement. And what I find as I talk about these things with other people is that people way beyond the life of the church are actually interested in who the historical Jesus was and indeed is and what he has to say. So that's the first thing about rediscovering the history of all these things. And uh, what's incredible is that if you then go to things like the, the Turin Shroud and other things, um, they've been able to even make uh, outlines of what Jesus would have or more than likely looked like. Um, this is one of the similar such models. And what I find somewhat interesting and, and, and baffling really is that it's the historians, the university departments, the scientists who are leading the way in this, not the church. Um, for whatever reason, we seem somewhat reticent about all this. And yet it's these other people from other disciplines that are actually leading the way and, and crying out for us to look at this stuff and actually take it on board. So that's the first thing. The second thing, and uh, we can get this from um, people like the jo Professor John Ibsen, is that uh, Jesus seems to have changed how he saw ministry. He started off in this triangle of Chorazin, Bethsaida and Capernaum and living out his faith here and sharing the message. But it seems to 
there was strong evidence that he then went up to Tyre and Sidon, which is in modern day Lebanon, well away from the Sea of Galilee down here. Why is that? Well, part of that is because he discovered quite by it to his surprise that when he was down in Galilee, down here, many of the people who came to listen to him were themselves Gentiles. In other words, not Jewish people of whom he was brought up with. And uh, in these places of Tyre and Sidon, and here's a picture of modern day Tyre, people wanted to know about the message. And that was true then, and it's true today. People do want to know the message and the values of Jesus, and indeed are trying to live them out, as we, I hope, have discovered during these days. It's not been just down to us. We simply need to join in with what God's doing, way beyond the life and boundaries of the normal church. So the difficulty really becomes then about this. It's about devotion and about helping to share the love of who Jesus is. Not just knowledge, but love. And to do that, we're going to...